Hi, Randy with notarubicon.com, and today I'm going to show you some of the basics of getting started using Chirp to program your ham or GMRS, FRS type radio. I'm going to go over all the basics so you can get familiar with all the different options that are in there. The program is kind of big, it is a little bit confusing, so I'm going to go over just the things you need to know so that you can easily get in there and program only what you need. For demonstration, I'm going to be using a UV5R radio, but Chirp works with dozens of different brand names and different types of radio, but all the basics are pretty much the same. So for demonstration, I'm going to be using the UV5R, which is a very popular radio. Now I'm going to assume that you already have Chirp installed and running correctly on your computer. This video is not a how-to on how to install Chirp. And I'm also going to assume that you already have a cable to connect your radio to your computer. Now there's a few different types. You need to make sure that you have the type that is correct for your radio. This is the type that's used on the Baofeng radio. And there are a lot of cheap and basically fake cables that you can get online, but they don't work. This isn't just a straight through wire cable. There's actually a little chip inside there. And if you get the wrong one, or if it doesn't have that chip, it's not going to work. So I've been using this for a year or so now. I've used it on a dozen or more radios. I'm going to put a link to this specific cable, which will work with a UV5R, a BTEC, GMRS V1, any radio that has this type of little dual connector. So I'm going to put the link down below so you can get one if you don't already have one. That is an affiliate link. So if you click on that link and buy something, I get credit for that sale. So thank you very much. Okay, so let's get over to the computer and get started. Okay, so here we are at the computer. I have Chirp open and ready to use. But before we get started, you're going to want to connect your cable into your computer and connect the radio. You're going to want to be sure that you firmly, and by that I mean really hard, push the little connector into the radio. When you first click it in, it may feel like it's clicked in, but sometimes it takes two good clicks to get it in all the way. When you think it's plugged in all the way, push it a little bit harder until you hear that little click, then you know it's in all the way. You're going to want to make sure that the volume is set at around 50 to 75%. You're going to have to do that just by seeing how much you turn the knob. If the volume is too low, the computer is not going to hear the signal. And if it's too loud, it could clip or distort and cause problems and create errors and slow things down. And although not 100% necessary, it's not a bad idea to disconnect the antenna. That way, if somebody's transmitting nearby, those transmissions won't come in and interfere when you're transmitting data back and forth between your computer and the radio. Okay, so now that you've got the radio plugged in, you are ready to start using Chirp. So when you first open it up, you're gonna get this plain looking, pretty much blank, empty screen. And it doesn't matter if you're using Windows, Linux, or Mac, all the screens and everything look and work pretty much the same. The basic workflow is, or at least the way that I do it, is I download Whatever I have in my radio, that's going to download into Chirp. I then make my changes, and then I upload those changes back into the radio. The changes that you make here inside of Chirp don't take effect on the radio until you upload them back into the radio. The radio then resets automatically, and then those changes take effect. So the first thing that we're going to do is download whatever's in the radio now. There might be the stock configuration, the way that it came from the factory, or I might have uh, manually entered things in by hand. I'm just going to download everything that's in that radio now to the computer. So on the menu items here, I'm going to select radio. I'm going to select download from radio. And you're going to get a window here asking what type of radio you have and how to connect to it. Now on most computers, it's not going to automatically know what port you're connected to. And on my computer, it's a guessing game. So I've got all these different ones to choose from. And I basically had to try each one until I found the one that worked because the names that show up aren't real self-explanatory. So for example, if I choose this and try to download, it's not going to do anything. Yeah, there we go. It's just going to give a, an error. So I know that this is my port. You might be able to tell because it's the only USB serial type connection, but it may look different on your computer. So it then wants to know what brand and model radio you're using. And as you can see, there's a huge list here. They're not even all showing on the screen of different brands to choose from. So I'm using the Baofeng. And then there's all sorts of different radios that it's compatible with. Now in the intro, I said that I was using a UV5R. I lied, I actually grabbed my F8HP, which is exactly the same as a UV5R, except it's eight watts instead of five watts. 
So everything that you see on the screen will be exactly the same as UV5R. So now if I hit OK, if everything works, it should download whatever is in that radio. That will usually take a few seconds, 15, 20, 30 seconds. And here we go. So now all the contents that were stored in the radio are now in this screen in front of me. And you'll see that there's a tab here. This is the, the file that I currently have open that I just created from downloading from the radio. You can have multiple files open at once. So for example, if I say new here, now I've just got a new blank file, generic untitled file here with nothing in it. And you can have multiple ones open. Doesn't matter what you do to any of these, none of them take effect until you select that file and go to radio and upload back to the radio. I'm gonna close that just to get that out of the way. Along the left-hand side here, you've got a couple of tabs. This is the Memories tab, and we'll get more into that in a second. And this is the Settings tab. So everything on this tab has to do with the radio itself. These are the, the radio settings, how the radio is going to operate. Everything in the Memories tab are where your channels and repeaters and everything are stored. So let's go do a quick run-through of the settings. If I click on Basic Settings here, uh, most of these you can also change through the keypad, but usually it's a lot easier to do it right here in the software. So here's my squelch level. It happens to be set to six. That's what I had set it by hand as, and then that's what we've downloaded into the computer here. You've got a battery saver option, which I always turn off. Backlight timer is how long the light turns on before it automatically turns off after you transmit or after you receive something, that's eight seconds. The little beep when you press things on the keypad is enabled. Timeout timer is how long it will allow you to talk or transmit at a time before it cuts you off. So I've got it set so I can transmit for 60 seconds. And if I go any longer than that, it's just going to cut me off. That way, if I accidentally sit on the, on the uh, transmit button or key it up accidentally, it's not going to key up and run down the battery all day. It's going to turn itself off after one minute. To change any of these values, you just hit the drop down, select the value that you want. Display mode A and B, this is what's going to show on my top line of the display, and this is what's going to show on the bottom line. So I've got mine set to show the name on the top and the frequency on the bottom, and you've got the screen colors and so on. The Roger beep, that's the little beep that you hear after you transmit. A lot of people hate that little beep sound. You can turn it off right here. As you can see, I have it not enabled. I'll leave that disabled. Some of the advanced settings here, the ones that are interesting here, Busy channel lockout, if that is enabled, what that's going to do is not allow you to transmit if somebody else is already talking. So if it detects a carrier, somebody else is already keyed up, and you key up, if this is enabled, it's not going to transmit. Automatic key lock means after the keypad will automatically lock so that you can't accidentally change frequencies or anything. The UV5R and the F8 type radios have a FM radio for listening to music. If you want to have that on, you just click that to enable it. These other settings here, most people won't use. Okay, under other, you can set a power on message, which is limited to only a few characters. So you've got two lines that you can have a custom message display there. And those are really the settings of interest in this tab. So now let's jump back into memories. Let's just go over what all this is. There's a lot of stuff here. It's a lot to unload, but it's really not that complicated once you understand what is what. So this first column, is the memory locations or the channels stored in the radio. So you can assign any frequency to any channel number and store them however you choose, whatever makes sense to you. The second column here is the frequency. So in this example, 462575. The next column is the name, and I can type in anything I want there, but it is limited in the number of characters that you can enter. Tone mode and all of these other columns are all for repeaters. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Got the mode, which is almost always gonna be FM. The power level, which you can set to high or low on the UV5R, and there's also a medium setting for the F8 radio, which you'll see here. And the skip means if you're scanning channels, whether or not to skip this particular channel. So if you want to program a simple simplex, which means just basic radio-to-radio, -radio, walkie-talkie type frequency, all you need to do is go in here, Pick what channel you want it to be on, double click there and type in your frequency. So 462575, you give it a name. You don't even have to give it a name. That's just for your own reference. And you wanna make sure that it's on FM usually, and you select the power level. That's all you need to do to enter a simple simplex 
channel. If that was the only channel that I wanted to program, or if I wanted to program several simple simplex channels, I would just type them all in. They would all look like this. For example, these are all FRS channels. And you can see that all I have is the frequency, a text description, which can be anything I want. And then if I'm ever scanning through the channels on these particular ones, it's going to skip. If, if I didn't want it to skip, I would just click the drop down and change it to blank. Now, if I want to program a repeater, these are all ham repeaters that I monitor. I don't transmit on them. And what you'll need to talk on a repeater is the frequency and the offset. So whoever owns the repeater will have to tell you what the frequency is and what the offset is. And they may sometimes give you two frequencies and you have to calculate the offset yourself. If you're a ham radio operator, you already understand all of this. So you're going to put in your frequency. That's the main receive frequency here. Again, a text description, and then just enter the tone, click it, select it from the drop down. Now the type of tones that are available here to select are going to be dependent on the type of tone that you enter here. So basically you're going to enter your different tones or codes in each column. You enter your offset here, just type it in and then whether that's a plus or minus offset. Select your power level, and that's it. Now let's say you've got a new radio, you don't have anything pre-programmed, you wanna start fresh. There are a few online sources you can query. You can select radio, query data source, and you see these online references that you can download from. Some of them require logins, but Repeater Book is a very good one. You can select political query, which means a political map, not a political as in who you voted for. And let's say I want to download all bands. These are ham bands for my area. I hit OK. And here we go. I've got a whole list here of all the ham repeaters on all the different bands, all preset, ready to go. All I need to do is upload them to my radio. Another nice feature, if you select File, Open Stock Config, there's some preset channel listings that you can get. So a very useful one is the NOAA weather alerts. So if I select that, I now have a new tab of some weather channels. Now, right now I've got two configurations open. I've got the one that I downloaded from repeater book, and I've got this generic NOAA weather channel that Chirp provided for me. I can only upload one profile at a time to the radio. So let's say I want to get my favorite repeaters so I'm going to click on my favorite Barstow repeater and I'm going to hold down the command or control key and I'm going to get Crestline, another favorite, and this Trona. Yeah, that's a really good one. I'm going to select those. I'm going to select edit and copy. I'm going to go over into my generic weather profile. I'm going to click on the next open channel. I'm going to select edit and paste. And now I got those channels that I had selected over here and it's put them at the end of my NOAA weather alerts list. Now let's say I had one other one, this uh, Rialto fire station. Sounds interesting. I'm gonna copy that, edit, copy. I'm gonna switch over to this generic tab. Let's say I wanna put that at channel 19. I just hit edit, paste, and there it is. Now let's say I don't like that name. I'm just gonna change the name. There we go. And let's say I also wanted one simplex channel. So I'm just going to type in that frequency, 462575. That just happens to be GMRS channel 16. We all know the Baofeng UV5R is not FCC part 95 certified for use on GMRS channels, but I'm only going to listen on this channel. So I just stick that in there and now I can listen to 462575 GMRS channel 16. I've got my weather stations here and I've got my repeater channels here and here. Okay, so I have my new customized channel list that I want to upload back to my radio. So I don't need this repeater book listing anymore. So to keep things from getting too confusing, I'm just going to close that. Now the way that I do it so that I don't lose any configurations is that I'm going to re-download everything that is currently in my radio. And I know I did that a minute ago. I'm going to do it again. I'll show you why in a second.
Okay, so I just re-downloaded everything from my radio, and it's in this tab here. And the reason I did that is because all of these custom settings here, like the name of the radio and some of these other customized settings, I don't want to lose these. And these aren't listed in this file. I don't even think I can upload this generic file directly. So I'm going to use my file that I just downloaded kind of as the template. Now yours might be blank. Yours might have stuff typed in already, like I mentioned. And I'm just going to come down to the end here. And I'm going to get all my custom channels that I just created. I'm going to select the top one, hold down the shift button to select them all. Edit and copy. Switch back over here to my file that I downloaded. Now let's say I want to start at 100. So I'm going to click on one slot 100, select edit and paste. So now I've got all the channels that I already had and I've just pasted in those new channels, the weather channels and the repeaters and that GMRS channel that I typed in manually. And now to get those back into the radio, all I have to do is select radio, upload to radio. Everything should be preset already because it remembers where I just downloaded from and I hit OK. And it takes a few seconds. And that's it. It's done. The radio is resetting. It takes about two seconds. The radio turns back on. And now all of these new channels and all the changes that I made are now in the radio. Once you do this a few times and once you're familiar with what all these columns are for, and once you realize that, for example, if you're using simplex and just regular radio to radio walkie-talkie type frequencies, like these FRS frequencies, which doesn't use most of these columns, you'll realize how simple it is. Basically, download from the radio, make your changes here on the screen, and upload back to the radio. That's really all there is to it. It gets a little bit more complicated when you're using repeaters. Well, you do it a few times, and it all starts to make sense. I know that was kind of a quick overview of something that's a little bit complicated, but if you have any questions, just post it in the comments below. I try to answer every question. Now, I'm still learning how to use this myself, so if I got something wrong or missed something super important, post that comment below as well so that others can read it. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you on the trail.